the kit looks to me, I had the opportunity to get up close and personal with it in, in, at the Vegas show. And the first thing I thought was that a beautiful, well-crafted, handmade boat mated mm. with the clock tower, and your drum set became the love child of that. <laughs> there are so <laughs> many, so many, uh, just there's so many elements of that kit, and obviously uh, there's a concept behind that that ties into the Time Machine tour and and things that um, most people won't even probably see from the audience. The the little things on your stage and the mm -hmm. little elements on that kit. Where did the concept for this kit come from? And, and who yeah, uh, eventually, um, or rather, at the very beginning of things, I had the idea of a, a, a long-form musical piece that's set in a steampunk world, mm -hmm. which is defined as the future as seen from the past. So uh, a lot of what, what has come to be known as the steampunk genre comes from H.G. Wells and um, uh, Jules Verne. So uh, what the world they saw in the 1860s, what they thought the future would be like with flying machines and... Um, uh, like the drum set, very much Captain Nemo's drum set from the Nautilus. And, right. and the scene that we used in the tour book for that, we wanted to create Captain Nemo's drum room. So that was a, a very large part of it. I wanted to get, yeah, the future as it ought to have been is another way, the way they envisioned it, because it was idealistic. You know, it wasn't like the uh, Orwellian dystopia that it's so often pictured, Blade Runner, that kind of thing, a, a very dark vision of the future. They, the future to them was a brilliant beautiful, romantic place, you know, where all these wonderful things were going to make adventures possible. Right. You know, there was no darkness about it, and that's what I loved about it. It was a romantic view of the future as seen from, you know, 150 years ago. So that was my starting place of creating a world for a story to take place in, and then couldn't help realizing, of course, what a great stage set presentation that would make. So that, that was kind of, that drum set was certainly six months in the making. Um, came up to the uh, drum workshop factory in January of last year, and um, uh, this year, in fact, it's still the same year, but, uh, and met with each of the department heads. First of all, sonically, of course, it's a musical instrument first. Sure. Got to sound as good as possible. So met with John Good and, uh, and Sean, the, the shell makers. That's where it began. And what, you know, the configuration, I said, here's the drum set configuration I'm going to have in terms of sizes. And they know a lot about my playing by now, too. And John Good knows that the small toms I tune up really high, then hit them hard so they detune de a little bit. So he considers that in, the, in designing the, the laminations direction and the reinforcement hoops all the way down for the particular tonalities that I favor. Um, so that was the, the beginning point. And then we talked about the finish and talked about the hardware. And uh, everybody is so creative. Like my dad came up to visit the factory with me one time and um, just had lunch with everybody and all that. And he went away just saying, it's amazing to see people so enthusiastic about their work. And that, that is the atmosphere. It's so creative. And, and um, the, you know, the guys from the hardware department and, and Louis, the painter, everybody's so full of ideas and wanting to help. And, and um, when people do see the drum set up close in a DVD or in photograph, all the little um, tightening bolts are all, all like taps and knobs, every one of them custom. And they you know, went to Orchard Supply Hardware and, and um, looked for stuff like that and then adapted it, threaded it, and, and uh, plated it to match the rest. So there was this tremendous creative ferment going on, and through through those first few months of the year, I was coming up here kind of um, to the drum workshop factory uh, every week or so to look at prototypes of this and that and, and refining everyone's ideas mm -hmm. into it and, and trusting to their um, imagination, inviting them to be part of it, I think is so, so nice, a big part of collaboration. And one thing I'd like to point out about a band like ours that does employ, like I was saying, 50 guys on the crew and the number of people artistically that work on our rear screen projections on the set design of the stage, on the art direction of tour books and um, merchandising the designing of a drum set and the symbols and another whole story. Um, is, it's so great to let other people do their best work. Sure. You know, I feel like it's a privilege to work with these creative artists and, and allow them give them a platform to do their very best work. So that's actually a very rewarding part of what we do. I love the process of collaboration, of course. Or I wouldn't have been in the same band all these years. But I love it in all those other ways, too, whether it's designing a drum set or putting together a tour book or the artwork for the new songs we're putting out. I'm very involved in all of that. And, and Getty very involved in the rear screen projection stuff because he loves film and loves collaborating with those people. And they are absolutely collaborative. You know, yeah. we don't just go to an office and say, we like to order a movie for this song. You know, <laughs> You're right. it, you know that's the beautiful thing about of, of, of uh, working with artists like that. And even the films we made, the funny, jokey films to open the show and, and uh, for the second funny. set. 
Um, these are the best filmmaking people in Toronto that we're working with, and the makeup people, you know, the fat suit and all that stuff. These are the best, these yeah. people. And we give them a chance to have fun and make a stupid movie, but expresses the best of what they can do because it's beautifully lighted. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the makeup, even Alex in the fast suit, sitting beside him like you and I, you could not see the join in that stuff. It's so well done. These people are really, He makes a good fat guy, doesn't he? <laughs> we always joke, it's the, it's the person he thinks is inside him at all times. Like the Officer O'Malley for me. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. ironically, you being a police yeah, officer. Yeah, but working yeah. with these people, like I said, the drum set was like that. It was, yeah. such a, it was so exciting to come up to. I wonder what I'll see today and have something new to show me in, in the hardware or a new prototype of the shells. And uh, same thing when um, Sabian got word of this theme, um, just just started producing designs to go with it. You know, me saying, could you make me some special symbols? No, I said, I'm making a kit like this. And, and we were going to the brilliant symbols all the time. And then so soon prototypes are coming of different finishes on there. And uh, the irony too, that some of those things did affect the sound. And some of the ideas um, we talked about, oh, for the uh, shell, perfect example. I loved the um, barrel stave look like conga drums mm -hmm. have. And I, when we first started talking about shells, I said, oh, I, I love that barrel stave look. You know, could we make a whole set of drums like that? And he said, you won't like the sound. Oh, okay. And then Louis the Painter said, well, I can make them look like that. Okay, great. That's the look I wanted. But very interesting, of course, again, there's no compromise in the sonic and the same in the symbols. Sure. When the first time of, type of painted finishes that they tried to use with the designs on there, it really did affect it. And um, Chris and I would be here in the Drum Channel studio comparing you know, my crash symbols with those ones, because that's where it really, really affected them a lot. Sometimes the rise symbol was actually kind of good to be dried up a little bit, sounded nice. And that, so that one. print did dry up the symbol just a little bit? At the first, it's really, it subdued them, muffled them even on the crashes. So uh -huh. there are various prototypes of finding the right material, the highly secret material yeah. <laughs> that, that is used. But uh, what I love is that this also becomes a mutually beneficial kind of research and development. Now they know how to do that. Right. And same, my previous drum set uh, from Drum Workshop with the Snakes and Arrows kit, and I wanted black chrome hardware on there. And that didn't exist. And we tried different types of plating, and I didn't want anodized or powder coated. It had to be black chrome. And eventually found a supplier in a black nickel finish that worked for me on the tour, and now it's something other people can have. You know, right. it's something that the drum workshop can offer with confidence that it works and is durable. And uh, other drummers can, you know, choose that black chrome finish if they like. And same with so many song, sonic experiments. And I'm always glad to be the guinea pig. You know, John Good has the new snare drum idea, the VLT, again, was a revelation for me. And uh, even before that, when I was using DW, I would have a different snare drum for indoors, you know, one for outdoors. And in the stu studio, I would bring in, I still have my old original Slingerland number one, and, you know, a metal Ludwig snare, and a, a wide selection of solid wood shells and exotic mm -hmm. stuff. And end up using, I think on Test for Echo, I probably used six to eight different, probably eight different snare drums on that. A just about a different one in every song. Yeah. Whereas on the last album I tried that, as we we're working on Snakes and Arrows, I would bring up another snare drum and try it because I would think, oh, maybe that would work. But the VLT crushed every one of them. I used that same snare drum on that whole album and on the whole next tour and still till now. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, even on when we recorded the two new songs earlier this year, I tried other snare drums. No contest.